Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sarasota Tim. Hey, before I forget, my glasses were up on the dash on my last video. If you guys heard some kind of annoying bouncing sound, I apologize for that. I was watching my video and I'm like, what is that bouncing sound? I just came out of UFIT Gym, had a good workout by myself, and I ran on the treadmill for 30 minutes, got a couple of miles in. It was a run-walk combination. I'm feeling good. Miss Tammy called, she's coming over. She went shopping, she's gonna bring some burger meat over. We're gonna throw that on the grill. I see the sun coming back out. We're having one of those typical Florida sun showers. So, I got some stuff done and it's now 12, 12.30. Today's video, this video, I want to talk about cruises. Uh, Tammy and I mentioned that we've been on 15 of them, and we love them, and they're the best value, bar none in our opinion, you can do for a vacation. Uh, just to reiterate, if you take a cruise, don't spend for two people for a balcony room, uh, whether it's overviewing, uh, overlooking the interior of the ship, and I'm referring to Royal Caribbean's Oasis class ships. They have what they call neighborhoods. And in the middle of the ship, there is this big hollow area where they actually have a, uh, it's called Central Park. And then on the back of the ship, they have the Aqua Theater and a boardwalk with a carousel and all that. So they have, you know, forward part of the ship and the rear, the aft balcony rooms that overlook these neighborhoods. And then on the outside of the ship, all the way around, like any ship, there are ocean view balcony rooms. We have always had an ocean view. And then the last few cruises, to save a little bit of money because they got really started crawling up in price, we sacrificed and took a, um, a balcony view over one of those central parks of the boardwalk. Now what we found was on an Oasis class ship with Royal Caribbean, if you get a boardwalk balcony room, you can see the back of the, you can see the ocean too because that back of the ship is open where so they do this aqua theater. If you go on YouTube and look for Oasis class ships with Royal Caribbean, you'll see what I'm talking about. They have five ships that are Oasis class. These are the largest ships on the planet. And most of them are right here in Florida, between Melbourne, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami, that you can go out on. And they're all, they all look the same, and they all keep them beautiful, so you really can't tell an older one from a newer one, whatever. But here's just some tips. And I'm speaking for Royal Caribbean, of how much to pay, what kind of room you can get. They don't have much cheaper prices for these interior rooms, which are really like closets. But there's a big difference before I go into that in that Oasis class ship from other ships on the, uh, in the market out there, such as Carnival or Norwegian or any of them. The Oasis class ships are 1,180 feet long. There are 284,000 gross tons. But the biggest thing about the biggest ships on the planet is the width or what the in the marine world is called the beam that means the width so when you're walking down the middle the promenade which looks like you're walking down the middle of a mall you can tell it's 150 feet wide that's the beam on uh, an oasis class ship it's considerably different and much more noticeable than when you're on a carnival ship or any of these other ships because it's just that much wider. It makes it feel so much, just imagine, you know, <laughs> when you're walking down the middle of the ship. Plus 1,180 feet is nothing to sneeze at either. 11 swimming pools, endless, endless, endless everything. So we've always paid from 1,500 to 2,200 for a week cruise that includes a balcony room, ocean view or neighborhood view, 
And the neighborhoods would bring it in the lower price where the ocean view is on the upper scale. We also only want to cruise, although we've cruised different times of the year, if you can ever find a deal, is during hurricane season. And there is <clears throat> nothing to be worried about because those ships have the best Doppler radar. Even when there's like a sun shower, the captain will turn and go around before he gets back on the, you know, the line they're, they're following to go to their next port, just so that nobody has to leave the pool. Those ships, you got 5,000 people on board, 2,200 crew. It's, it's 5,500 uh, passengers. It's almost 10,000 people on these Oasis class ships. And they make it perfect for you. It is a dream vacation. I can't imagine going to Hawaii would be any better or anything would be any better because any vacation you take where you have to fly there, that's an expense and you have all this aggravation of luggage. Then when you get there, there's nothing included. You don't get to eat for free and you, there's no entertainment. They don't have world-class, you know, shows and stuff like Vegas shows at the uh, resorts or hotels. And then when you do go out to eat, you know, you're going to pay a fortune and you're, you're just amongst people that live and work in the area. They're not, you know, you can't even have a conversation with other people that are doing the same thing. Then when you got to drive there, if you've had some drinks, you got to get out and drive. You got to rent a car. You got to pay for that. Then you got to get it back on time. Then you got to get a room before you uh, get on the ship to make sure you're there early. And then you're probably going to get a room before you fly back so you don't miss your flight in case anything happens. And then when you're driving on the freeway each day for your week vacation, you just drive around with a bunch of road ragers that aren't on vacation. Get on these cruise ships, forget land, forget the world, be amongst 5,000 others that are doing the same thing, and you run into them again in shows or whatever and meet people and, you know, get together with them for a drink or see them at the Rising Tide Bar. It's this thing that goes up and down or one of these other places in there, you know, and you walk back to your room and twice a day it's got, it's been cleaned for you. You don't even get that in a resort. They come once a day and they leave these uh, towel animals, you know, they, they make for you and you can, you can uh, request better uh, padding on the bed and then you can sit out there at the, and have breakfast delivered to you and meals delivered to your room and sit on your balcony in the morning with coffee and, and danishes and look at the water go by and you could be laying there at night and open the sliding door and hear that that ocean just going by the quiet then when you pass certain ports you see mountains and stuff down the Caribbean then when you get to these ports you don't even have to go into town or go very far. You don't have to do excursions. I never do. You just get off and right there, there's entertainment. There's there's shops to buy t-shirts and knickknacks and you can swim in the ocean right there. You can just jump right in where they have some areas roped off like in Cozumel. You don't have to pay for an excursion snorkeling trip. And But if you want to, they have these places where you can go zip lining and uh, they also own their own private islands that they take you to and you get off and they cater a huge picnic. It's this Coco Cay in the Bahamas that I will never go on a cruise that doesn't stop at Coco Cay. That's Royal Caribbean's private island. And it is, uh, you just have to look it up on YouTube. It's too much to explain. It is um, amazing, amazing. And you don't have to worry about, you know, danger. If you go to Cozumel and you leave the port and you get into a taxi or whatever and you go into Mexico, I don't know, I don't do it. Uh, uh, uh so I stay right in the ports and then you know you don't want to take a chance on the foods and water and you know being held up or whatever you never know stay within the ports I never even sometimes Tammy and I we don't even get off the boat we own it we go to the pool and we own it we have it to ourselves so here's the pricing we always book not with Royal Caribbean but with a company in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and their website is bestpricecruises, plural, dot com. Bestpricecruises.com in Port St. Lucie. 
And what they do for you is they'll give you a price. And if you happen to be a Florida resident or if you're over 55 or you've cruised before and you have a crown and anchor number with Royal Caribbean, all these things will give you additional discounts. But even if you don't have any of those, they sacrifice their commissions and they have a lot of rooms that they've already bought that they sell themselves that, that Royal Caribbean gives them as a booking agent. And what they'll do for you is they'll give you some onboard credit money. So Tammy and I have always gotten a room that's a balcony room with between 50 and $200 onboard credit that we get to spend on any and everything that you could possibly spend your dollar on while you're on that ship, whether it be drinks, excursions, t-shirts, extra food at restaurants that they do have restaurants that do charge. They have these four fee restaurants. They're supposed to be different. Don't waste your money. And all of that. Now we do go to Johnny Rockets, which is not part of a, that's free, that's not free. And they have a Johnny Rockets on the boardwalk. And if you get your, you know, you need your fill of American food and you want fries and a burger or shake. I don't know if you ever had a Johnny Rockets, but oh my gosh, amazing. So you go to Johnny Rockets and you spend, and then it's all you want. It's per person, but it's like 15 bucks or something. And then you can get all you want. You want two big hamburgers, the biggest ones they make, they'll give it to you. Once you pay your fee, everything is all you want. So that we spend the onboard credit on that, or Tammy will buy one of them necklaces that you can put your little C-Pass card in that you can flash uh, when you get your free drinks, or if you don't have free drinks like we do, uh, and you're gonna buy a drink, you know, you don't use money on the ships, you just use this card they give you called a C-Pass card. Everybody wears it around their neck or they keep it in their pocket, but Tammy wears one, it's got a little bedazzler uh, sparkle thing on it. And that's how you also get in your room. And you can buy something like that or a hat, you know, Royal Caribbean t-shirt or something if you want, whatever you want. You know, you get this, you get this onboard credit. And so if you do buy drinks right away, you know, you've got a little credit going towards the cost before you start spending your own money. So bestpricecruises.com is our go-to. And the price, we figured if you could spend $150 per day, per person, so $300 a day, minimum seven day cruise, because the Oasis class ships don't go less than seven days. Those big world largest cruise ships, they don't do three, four day cruises. They only do week cruises and or longer. You know, sometimes they have a 10 day. And uh, so you get a seven day cruise. It's gonna run you $300 a day, 150 a piece, three times seven is 21 or less. We've gotten them as low as 15, 17, 18, 19, 50, and have that onboard credit of 50 to 150 to $200 also, which you really deduct from that net price you pay so that's really, if you get it for 21, but you got 150 onboard credit, you're under 2000. And you're going on a week that you don't have to drive, you don't have to make food at home, you don't have to buy gas, you don't, you don't spend any money doing any other entertainment for a week when you're at home. And you're on this cruise, and if you deduct just what you save on your utilities and the food you don't have to buy, there's another, at least a couple of hundred bucks. So, I mean, you are treated like royalty and you're on this beautiful cruise ship. And let me tell you something. Let me just tell you this while I'm thinking about it. If you even are considering or thinking that you are going to get seasick, the Lord strike me dead right now. I tell you this. Every time when that cruise ship gets ready to come into a port, and they kind of come in early, so you got to get up and, you know, some do come in about eight or nine. So you're up, you know, get your breakfast and be out there to see it come in and, you know, dock. And then at five or six is when they leave every day, uh, each, each day. Sometimes you have a sea day where they don't stop. 
you cruise 24 hours. But every time, this is what my point is, every time you want to see the boat, the ship, I call it a boat, stop or leave, if you don't watch your clock, you're going to miss it. You're not going to know. You don't feel anything. You don't ever feel anything. After your first day of cruising, and you're walking around that big promenade, that wider ship I'm talking about, you just think you're in a big hotel or you're on land. It's it's solid. You, there's no nothing. It's and when that thing stops and leaves the port, you don't feel it. You don't know it. I I can't tell you how many cruises where I'll go outside. You know, I'll be in the promenade. I love this one coffee shop. I'm always inside a lot. And then I'll pop out. They have a big track that goes around the fifth deck that goes all the way around, unobstructed, all the way around the ship. You can jog or walk. It has uh, two lanes, one's walking, one's jogging. And I'll walk out there or step out on the pool deck up on the top. And I'll say, we left? Ah, I missed it again. And you're already like at sea or you see the land, you just missed it. And you're like, man, this ship, you don't feel anything. You know, or you wake up in the morning when they come in kind of early and you walk out to go get an early breakfast and you go look out on the jogging track or you go up to the top deck for the pool and the thing has already been tied off and stopped and <laughs> you're at the you're you're at the port you don't feel anything folks you're not going to get seasick now i hope god doesn't strike me dead because i have to take back what i just said there was a time we were coming back from Cozumel to Florida, and there's a, a Florida Straits area right there where when the tide changes and everything, there can be uh, a movement you could feel. And there was somebody on, on board that was sick, and the ship had to kick it in the butt and get back to Miami. They didn't want to airlift them, but something happened, and they were just really you know, accelerating fast to Miami. And we I think the ship went back to Fort Lauderdale or even Melbourne, I forget. But we went to Miami because that was the first spot they could get where a boat could come out to the ship and take this person that was ill. And so the ship went beyond the normal cruising speed and went really fast. And that caused to, to feel nothing that made you sick. It's really hardly even worth mentioning, but we felt it. We felt it. He, you could water ski behind it. <laughs> he was moving. And then the ship came out. Because normally when you go by, until it comes into where it ports, it stays out in the shipping lanes. It's so far away from land, you can't even see land really that well. But we came in real close. I was able to recognize certain um, landmarks. And then the ship came out and everybody was watching. And then one time we were leaving a cruise and these people were leaving Cuba trying to escape Cuba and come to Florida. And by law, you have to help a distressed, you know, boat or whatever. And these people were on this little tiny thing that was going to sink. It was a man-made box, a floating tub. They had like 10 people on it. And I video it. I think I have it. It's on my channel. You can look it up. Go back to my cruise videos. I filmed it for quite a while. We had to stop, but we didn't take them on board because of COVID and uh, we would have had to do something or that would give them um, asylum or whatever. But we waited and we sent a boat out to them to take them food and water, the, the rescue boats that the ship had, until the Coast Guard came. And then they took over with it. And then we motored on. So a lot of exciting things have happened. I have seen a helicopter come as, as well in Haiti and land on the ship and had to take somebody off. So, yeah, things happen. You know, it's 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 interesting. But thank God never nothing ever happened to Tammy and I. We've had nothing but... And one time I think we really got crazy and went on four in one year when we first started doing it. It was just... We couldn't wait to do it again. It's so, so fun. And... You know, you go to, they have formal night twice, twice during the cruise and you dress up and you get your pictures taken and you can buy them or not. Uh, 
it's just fun. Everybody dresses up and looks their best that night. The rest of the week, everybody's walking around with suntans, board, board shorts, t-shirts, bathing suits, flip-flops, you know, and anything goes. But then when you go to dinner, you know, you put your, you know, a little nicer clothing on. You don't have to dress up. I like to sit down dinner, but they got a buffet. Uh, it's called the, um, oh, I always forget the name of it upstairs. It's a big, huge um, buffet. Oh, what is it called? All the Royal Caribbean ships have it, and it's the same name. I'll think of it in a minute. You're probably going to tell me in the comments because I know people are watching. So, uh, get you a cruise for two grand. Take your significant other. Take your spouse. Take your kids, whatever. Get you a balcony room. Enjoy yourself, and you'll have a vacation. It's the best value and memories that you'll always have. And, you know, you, you talk about the deep blue sea. You want to see deep blue? You go out there. On your TV, you know, they have a, a channel dedicated to showing a map of where the ship is, the ship's speed, and the depth of the water. And it's it's like five miles, two miles deep, <laughs> some of the water out there. <coughs> and, um, you know, you keep an eye on the speed. And those ships literally go over the same water they went the week before. They're on a GPS. It's just like air traffic. There's a lot of air. Uh, there's a lot of planes in the sky. You don't know it, but there's hundreds. There's thousands of planes at any one time. Same with ships. It's not just cruising ships. It's the, you know, the the uh, bring the, the bring all the commerce, the um, container ships. Hundreds of ships are out there, and they're all following a GPS so they don't run into each other. And you'll see other cruise ships out there at night with their lights on or a container ship and that's cool to see and there's just so much and when you're sitting on the pool deck during the day getting your suntan on and you know you get that breeze going and you can get in the water and it's a salt water pool they put the ocean water in and change it out every night so it's nice and fresh and you can go up to the, any of these numerous bars and, or they come around and bring you these blue, green, frozen mudslides if you're a drinker, which I say don't. But people are going to do, you know, on a cruise. Uh, I drink my share. But if you want to get a nice tea or a, uh, a Coke or whatever you want or a virgin pina colada, something like that, you can have them bring it to you. And you're sitting there at the pool. You got your little umbrella drink. And you're on these nice pool chairs. You can get down in the water. It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. Highly recommend it. Take yourself a cruise. Save up for it. Check it out. If you live in Florida, bestpricecruises.com. Uh, go to Melbourne. And then you on the parking, there's these places that are right outside the ports. Don't park right at the port. It's expensive, like parking at the airport. You get this shuttle, they take you, it's just about a five or 10 minute ride just outside the port. You pay in advance, works out to 10 bucks a day. I don't think I've ever paid more than 70 bucks. It's usually like 60 bucks. It's a very safe, secure place. And every week new cars come in, they're cruisers, and you put your car in there and they get you on these little buses. And they take you right to where you step off and you go and you, get ready to board and you check in at Royal Caribbean. And then when you come off, they're right there waiting for you. You get a little ticket. They'll tell you where to see, look for them when you come off the cruise, at the end of your cruise. Get back on your little thing. Takes you back to your park parking lot. They take your luggage off for you. Give them a tip and drive back home. I'm usually back home within 15 minutes because the ports are right here. Unless I go to Melbourne, which is a couple hour drive. But folks, it's a wonderful thing to uh, to do, and you don't even have to be retired to do that. Get yourself a good deal. Find a way to get the money together if it doesn't break you. And, you know, instead of just grinding it out every day and throwing your money away on something else or going to an expensive dinner, bank that money. Save up for one. And, you know, book it a couple of months ahead, two or three months ahead. Start your diet. That's what we do. 
and try to, you know, lose those few pounds because you, you know, you're going to eat that buffet, right? You're probably going to go bad. And, you know, you're counting down the days. I put a thing on my phone, how many days until, you know, my cruise and watch YouTube videos, get psyched about it. You'll know the ship's floor plan, the outlay. You'll have your room. You can even Google your room number that you booked and, and somebody's like, I've done it. I made a video in every room I've stayed in. You'll see my videos. Look them out. Check them out on uh, cruises I've got. You got to go way back because it's been a while since we cruise, but we've done, we done a bunch of them. And they're online. They're on my uh, channel. But anyway, that's what you guys wanted to know, how much it would cost. That's the realm of what you should pay. There has been in the beginning a time where we did spend a lot more than that before we learned uh, and, you know, going in spring break and these things where some people only have that time off or, you know, you got to take your kids or something. You're going to spend a lot more money. If you get those sweets, they're not worth it. Tammy got one once because she likes a tub. She likes to take a bath, you know, instead of the shower all the time. It's a luxury. The ladies like that. But, and you get a little bigger room, you know, it's got like a little living room, but, uh, we don't do that anymore. We get a, a balcony room. It's just nice to be able, when you're on your downtime and you're in your cabin, instead of one of those cabins, it's just four walls. <laughs> and it is really just a place. You're outside a lot. But when you do have that balcony and you can just step out there and smell that ocean air and look at that water go by, or if you're looking over Central Park or the boardwalk, and you can look back that way and actually see the wash. That's what they call it from the... Uh, from the props of the ship, that big white wash that's going off the back as the ship motors away and you're sailing away, cruising your life away. Oh man, uh, you know, and, and seven days is perfect. You know, you, your third and fourth day in there and you're like, man, we got two or three more days of this. And you just, every day you're like, what do you want to do? I don't know. You get out of your room that one hour in the morning or two to let them clean it. And then when you go to dinner at night, they got your schedule kind of down so that you come back. And they're really quick. They get that thing together. You can ask for extra towels. I always do that. First day, I, I want double towels and plenty of soap. And we want that bed with the extra uh, comforter foam topper on there or extra bedding because they are kind of hard. Uh, so... And uh, just, just I, I'm getting myself excited. Just book yourself one. That's why you'll, you'll meet people on cruises too that say their diamond status or their pinnacle status or their, their uh, whatever. They got these different uh, color numbers and, and medallion numbers, whatever they call it. Uh, that they've taken so many cruises, you'll know why. Because you too will want to cruise. Don't make the mistake of going on a three day carnival cruise on one of them cheap old ships that are real small with a closet room you'll get off that ship and you'll say i couldn't wait to get off that thing bunch of loud people bunch of drunks they're on that bargain cruise for 2.99 3.99 don't do those spend a little bit but don't spend four thousand go on a seven day cruise use royal caribbean go on the oasis class Go on the Caribbean. Make sure you go to Coco Cay as one of the stops. Also, St. Martin. Wonderful. Wonderful. The rest of them, we don't even get off anymore. We just own the ship while everybody else gets off and goes and spends all this money on these excursions. We don't even do it. So we don't even spend any more than the cruise cost because we, we I did a few of them. This, there's nothing to it. They want $100 to do a zip line. It takes like five minutes, and then you're $100 poorer. <laughs> Forget it. We don't have that kind of money. So anyway, get you a cruise and crush it.